hello my bosom friends welcome back to my channel prayer all doing wonderful and are keeping in extremely good health and in perfect perfect happiness today we're continuing our much exciting conversation which has brought in an influx of subscribers welcome i welcome you with so much love so yeah let's dive into chapter six of why men love babes in total control of themselves so far we've seen that this book is pregnant with life-changing advice i should say you know things that we can implement in our day-to-day -day lives and actually see tangible results and today is no exception chapter six is very much interesting because it's about nagging so it's nagging no more what to do when it takes you for granted and nagging doesn't work and Ben Franklin said well done is better than well said nagging is such a weak place to operate from obviously as as a feminine woman a woman who is in total control of herself a babe in total control of herself doesn't nag because if a woman who is in total control of herself or a feminine woman who is resting in that feminine energy she knows that nagging doesn't give re the results that she wants we if you are a parent i'm a parent myself i know when i nag the task that i want to be accomplished never gets accomplished even if it's accomplished it's going to be in half <laughs> behind kind of a task because nagging doesn't feel good and also when you're nagging it means that you're actually demanding of something to someone that they don't want to do so she also opens the chapter by diving into psychology if you follow the works of sigmund you understand that children are basically their i would say primal desires of framed from the time they're three years old so when you're dealing with a man in particular there's always a three-year-old man inside that grown man so the moment you nag or the moment you ask for something to be done more than three times chances are you're nagging and you automatically become his mom and when you become his mother or maybe someone who raised him a grandmother a nanny a nun an aunt a teacher you are coming from that place of wanting to dominate him and that place is never going to put you in a place where you can be perceived as a as a as his dream girl basically so you need to get away from nagging and less when you talk less that's when you can actually get more done and a woman who is in total control of herself she understands these things and when you really understand that inside each and every man there is a three-year-old you start up you so you move away from coming across as his mom to actually being his dream girl by not nagging and also being an uh, a negatron it doesn't matter uh, what your credentials are you could be a successful lawyer who is hung their shingle or you could be a doctor or you could be a stay-at-home mom it really doesn't matter when you nag all those things are taken away you are just seen as somebody who just goes yep 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 too much and when you yep 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 too much chances are a man is going to shut down and is going to put you on mute so that's, I feel like that's where a lot of us miss the mark because you can wear a freely dress, you can put on the makeup, you smell good, you look good, you're exercising, your intellect, you are well read, you're well traveled, you can converse with anybody, but the pitfall might come in the sense that you're gonna be nagging. And then when you nag, like I said, everything else becomes meaningless because he's going to think, oh my God, I have to go home to my nagging partner. All I just want is to sit on the couch <laughs> in the men of our bandy <laughs> and put my feet up and just watch my watch the game, right? So we need to get away from that because when you, the moment you become his mom, it means the romance also kind of goes from two to go back yeah. well done is better than well said so men understand action when he's acting up instead of you yappering too much just act it out basically for example he no longer takes you out as much as he used to so instead of whining and complaining about it 
You can simply get dressed one Saturday night and say, I'm going out with my friends. I understand you're busy, you're watching the game. So that this way he will get the message loud and clear. You don't have to help him try to understand where you're coming from and being too emotional about it. So you can just act it out. And when you act it out, basically mommy's not coming back. Mommy, you know, back to the three-year-old. The security blanket is gone and it's no longer predictable. So back to what we've been chatting about in chapter three, I believe, about keeping your mystery. When you keep your mystery this way, it means that you're less talking, more action, and more action equals more mystery. And also having your own life, again, like we covered in the previous chapter, having your own life so that you're not so dependent on him so much. Again, this way, this takes away the pressure from the relationship and also the pressure from you nagging too much. Taking away the security blanket is so important, like I said, because it creates the mystery. And just like his mom, his grandmother, his whoever who raised him, you, they, he knows at the back of his mind that even if he acts up, Mommy is great, still loves me. Mommy is gonna be there, or Granny is gonna be love. Is you still gonna love me even if Granny is mad at me? But if you're not mad, if you're not nagging a lot, and you do your own thing, you've taken away that security blanket, right? So that means again, you have actually created space for him to to chase after you. Another effective way to go from nagging to being the dream feminine woman, his dream girl, is about going back to the basics, back to the beginning of the relationship. Treat him like a friend. Don't treat him so much like a lover because when you do this, you are going to be more relaxed. Think about your friends. Think about the people you hang out with. There are no expectations, basically. There are no, there's no pressure. You are relaxed. You're not asking for too much. You are actually fun to be around. And you hang out with your friends because you genuinely want to. Because in friendship, honestly, there's no contract, is there? So that's how you're supposed to approach relationships. Still being laid back being the fun loving girl that you are where you don't have to worry too much about what you're saying what he's doing you are just together having a jolly good time and when you do this it becomes fun and you are less nagging and there is less pressure so that this way you keep the love calls burning and you keep the excitement in the relationship. When you do this, it means you're charming, you're not demanding, you are actually pleasant to be around, and you're in your, you're, yeah, you're relaxed, which is a fantastic place to be, which is the complete opposite of being a negatron. A negatron is gonna be negative, she's going to be unhappy, she's going to be moody, she's going to be explosive. So the thing about nagging is that he knows he has you exactly where he wants you to be. You're not going anywhere, you are just like mommy. You're going to be angry at him, but it means that you're going to, yeah, you're going to forgive him for whatever sin he has committed or whatever task he does is not doing or whatever affection he's not giving you or the time you're not giving you. Whereas if you are relaxed and you're not nagging him about it, it's going, he's going to mull over it for a long time because he's going to wonder, wait a minute, I thought I'm being the bad boy. Why isn't she nagging me? Why is she so happy? Why is she, why is she calm? Why is she so nice? And then before you know it, he's going to self-correct himself without you even lifting a finger. The thing, so the thing to remember is when you tell a man how you feel, he doesn't understand all those things because we tend to be more emotional, isn't it? So sometimes it's about also meeting him halfway basically and um, it's speaking his language because back to being friends, isn't it? When you treat him like a friend, it's going to be on an equal footing. One thing I love about the equal footing is that a man is not going to be above you because when you come in a relationship, you're going to come as, as equals, isn't it? Because we have done the work ourselves. We are not just waiting for somebody to fill up our cups and to make us feel whole because we understand a babe in total control of herself is going to be in charge of 
her security, her emotional needs, her well-being, happiness, scorecard, you increase it whichever way works for you because we are all unique individuals. So she gives an example of a parrot trainer basically. If you put a parrot here, he's going to bite you. And if you put him here, it's going to be is going to come on your hand, isn't it? Whereas if you put him on the ground, the same thing. So what you don't want is to put a man above you because the moment you put him above you, it means that he has all the power. And as a feminine woman who is confident, who is secure in herself, she's going to hold some of her cards close to the chest and not everything is to be on the table, starting with emotions and starting with nagging because nagging is about coming from a place of weakness basically. So we want to come across as dignified feminine women and also a man who is uh, a high caliber man who has done the work, who is emotionally available, who definitely respect a woman who can hold her own and have an intelligent conversation without being all over the place, without being too emotional. We're not saying show up as Tarzan and be strong in the sense that you can't even show an emotion, but you have to do it in moderation, but more logic and less um, and less emotional and also less verbalizing and more actionizing because like I said, men do understand action. Also according to the old adage, actions do speak louder than words. So if you want to really convey a strong message, you have to actionize it. And another thing to remember is when there are serious issues that are pressing that needs to be attended to and he knows you have raised the issue maybe twice or three times at the most, you just lean back a little and when you do that, you're going to, if you ask, by the way, what about such and such? You can simply say, well, I don't feel like talking about it now, but when I'm feeling better, we can, we can discuss the issue, we can revisit the issue. So when you do this, it means you're also giving the man the chance to dissect it in his mind, kind of like take his hard drive and see what is happening, what needs to be fixing, what needs to be dusted. And when you do the, when he does this, it means as a man, because he's a problem solver by nature anyway, he's going to wonder why isn't she bringing it up? And more importantly, how can I fix the issue without her nagging me? Because she hasn't nagged me, so clearly it is extremely important. Why? Because you've taken away the security blanket, you've taken away the pressure, and you trust him. You trust that as a man who is in his power, he's going to rise up to the occasion, just like cream always rises to the top. So the idea here is to yep, yep, less, <laughs> Keep the mystery and when you do this, you keep the love calls burning and when you nag too much, you are just becoming his mother without even realizing it. And when you do that, you take away again the love calls. They won't be warm enough because of the nagging. And also, even if we do think about it, if we think of men as, as people, right? It means we're going to see things from their perspective and nagging you even don't you don't even like to be around people who nag i hate it i hate whiners and complainers and people who nag i can't do it maybe because i'm so empathic and as an empathy i i cannot be around such energy because it drains me so that's how we should also see men because when we see things from their perspective and actually treat them like like people basically <laughs> not like the saviors that we put on a pedestal it means that we're going to be more i would say more assertive and more logical with how we show up and also when we nag too much it means definitely the cheese has fallen off the <laughs> has fallen off the crackers don't do it it's not it's not sexy <laughs> According to John Collins, he says, never claim as a right what you can claim as a favor. So that's the thing. We need to really understand that a favor is a favor, right? It's not 
we're not owed these things but a man who loves you is going to want to rise to the occasion nagging makes it a right and then favor asking for a favor makes it a positive experience so we need to really find a balance because there is a difference between nagging and asking for a favor a favor it has to be something joyful he has to want to do these things he has to want to please you whereas with nagging you are demanding something of someone else and also the thing another thing to remember is that just just like you wanting to be perceived as as the dream girl in his eyes and which you are with your amazing qualities you also have to understand that a man has to be wants to be perceived as a hero in your eyes as well so it's a two-way street it's a re it's reciprocity you have to give as good as you get and you have to get as good as you give <laughs> yeah something like that so do make sure that you are not nagging and that's how you keep him where you want him and also that way you want he won't have 100 percent hold on you and making sure that it's a favor remembering that it's a favor not nagging right whereas with the favor it is going to be joyful it's going to be exciting whereas with nagging it's going to feel like you are demanding these things of this human being and it's not fun is it so yeah that's all we have time for today i do hope you enjoyed today's video take care of one another love one another and be kind to one another if nothing else i shall be seeing you in my next video